Lakers won't be able to take top spot here today if they get a victory, but will be the main focus on their mind is next week. Round six, where they are part of the first subscriber clash against the Guardians of the Crib. Today, though, they have one final hit out, and that is to be up against the Aviva Premiership runners-up Wasps to take on in this round five clash. Hello everyone and welcome on to Cornflakes Crib, your home of Rugby Challenge 3 and the subscriber series, the Global Rugby Challenge, where you guys take the field and take on the world elite and try to stamp your mark on world rugby one game at a time. The Flakers are up against the Wasps. This is a home game for the Flakers as well. And you've got to say the team has been traveling decently, but because of bonus point retention, they do not have a chance of joining the Guardians in top spot after their first round victory. But of course, like I said, concentration will be fully on beating them in round six. So they've got a tough ask here to go into this game and beat them, beat the Wasps, and put themselves in the best possible position to take that number one spot. Here is the starting team for the Flakers here today. Peter Matthews will line up alongside James Hudson, a hooker, and David Allen on the tight head side of the front row. Ryan Webb and John Joseph will be a new partnership in the second row. Connor Nicholson will start on the blind side of the back row with Francois Valentine and Jack Sullivan at seven and eight. Jack McCalmont had partnering with the two Jacks at eight and nine. Jack McCalmont at scrum half with Owen Richards at fly half. The midfield partnership will be where we had the two Jacks at eight and nine. We've got the two Vs at 12 and 13. Manuel Valera and Pierre Valentine will be the centers. On the left wing, Jim Ali Gino will line up with Andre Miller, team of the week in the center last week. He will be on the right wing for today's matchup. The two-time team of the week fullback, Michael Guren in the number 15 jumper. Up against them will it be a Wasp. Now the team hasn't been travelling the best in the business, but they do have the potential to upset the best of them. You look through the side and you see there's plenty of talent in this pack. And the running back row we've seen from the Exeter Chiefs last episode, you could expect to see the same for the likes of Carr and Haskell if they can get themselves on the front foot. The back line we've got to look out for. Last time we've seen Wasps, they were amazing through the midfield of Armitage and Daly. The back three, Bassett, Eastman and Lou are none to be shouted at. So these guys can definitely cause a disruption, but who will head into this big clash next week with the best confidence? Will it be the Flakers or will it be the Guardians who already have that five points in the bank? We'll find out over the next 18 minutes. We've got the Wasps in the away strip. You see there the white, predominantly white, yellow uh, and yellow kit for today's matchup. Not to clash with the Flakers who are in their home strip of the... Oh, that's left the line as well. Nicholson's got to hurry. He's got away to win though. Luckily, and Hudson hacks us away. And the hooker doing the best he can with the situation. And he's passing. This could be a great start here for the Wasps. But no, it's shut down. And it's a touch by Pierre Valentine. Wow. We've seen a hectic start last time. And the Guardians match against the Exeter Chiefs. No different here today. It's to the middle. Go the Wasps. And Gaskell pulls it down. And they drive. The rolling ball is five minutes in. It sits up for more. 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 Dummying. All fighting. It's got to be a try. The Wasps are in. The crowd is stunned. What a start of the set piece. Wasp score, it's 5-0, kick to come. Do not leave your seats, it's Harriet Daly. We talked about them, key men. That's a midfield partnership, Armitage and Daly. There was Armitage, pops it short. And to be fair, Armitage could have gone himself. We've seen Bassett, he created the chance on that left wing and the little grubber kick inside as well. That forced the Flakers into that's uh, putting it out effectively. That was what they had to do. They had to defuse the situation. The grubber kick was perfectly positioned and has resulted now in that set piece brilliance to score the try. And now Jimmy Gopeth could make it seven. Two games in a row we've seen the non-subscriber side get off to the great start. And we're gonna have to see a comeback now from the Flakers. Going to get into this game. Owen Richards. He's got the job to do at 10. 
The wind, you can see, is quite strong here. It's going from behind the flakers early, so they've got to use this in the first half as he kicks left side. And it's close. Oh, Ali Gino flies high. McCallum does brilliantly. Hudson, the line of Francois Valentine, tries to step. Release. And the Valentine brothers looking to lead the Flakers to another great victory here. Allen, oh, what a pass to Hudson, but that was terrible. And it's picked up from Launchbury. And it is the Wasp to survive. Great offload. It's the way they come in again. Miller worked in two and he's knocked it on and thrown into touch straight away. Goodness gracious. I mean, these two sides are playing at such a frantic pace. It's hard to know what's going on. Out on the left side. Crouch. Bassett again. Almost Find. causing trouble with Andre Miller, the bigger man. Puts in a bigger hit. Scrum feet. For the Flakers, the Calmont feet played 10 last week. Steady scrum for the Flakers. O'Sullivan, O'Sullivan! Oh, what a run from O'Sullivan! Oh my God, that is amazing! Simply outstanding from the Flakers. Scrum set beats try, take a bow, Jack O'Sullivan. That is what dreams are made of right there in rugby heaven this was absolutely fantastic look at this bang bang get out of the way three defenders can you believe it and a gift for Andre Miller try of the season no question about it the execution here was simply outstanding how does he take out three defenders like that you've got to look at yourself very very hard after defending an atrocity like that. Take a bell. i got to say it again. Jack O'Sullivan. Team of the week already with that. Fantastic play. Owen Richards looking to climb his way up the uh, points tally for the competition. With another opportunity for two. Which he makes no errors with. It is 7-7. A good try for the Wasps. But it is equally well replied to by the Flakers. Man, oh man, I've never seen a try quite as clinical as that by any team. Here's a short kickoff, and it's dangerous kicking to Connor Nicholson, but he's down very quickly after receiving the ball. Goes back to uh, Owen Richards, who smashed this one away, despite having a couple of players, especially the likes of Andre Miller, waiting there on his left side. He offloads it brilliantly and kicked away from Robson. Back there is Michael Gurren. Oh, Gurren's got to look out. Intercepted! And oh, it's knocked backwards. There was trouble there for Wasp. They almost knocked it on. But he managed to flick it backwards, which is well played by him. Jimmy Gopeth runs to the line. And then Intercepted's given them a great chance now. As Robson goes away. Oh, great run there from Taylor. Release. So he pops it to his right. Now they go left side and trying to... Get it through the thickness. Car and so ball! And here goes Armitage! Great pass out wide. Numbers have to pay dividends here for the Wasps. They go on the 22. Slow ball again. It's here for Gopeth. Armitage has been in the devastating form as Car goes wide. And they look outside for Bassett. He's up against Allen. Bassett 101. He's knocked that on. And it will be grounded in goal. And we'll go back for the knock on. Bassett has been. Superb in this match already, and we know what he's like because he was like that last time we met the Wasps as well. Bind. 7-7 seven, seven the score. Set. Bonus points smell. Well. Looked very, very unlikely. Oh, and that is a great shot there from the Wasps. The pack has responded brilliantly, and they have set themselves up for another set piece chance. Anyone short side? No, they go open. Double cutout pass away, and that's grubbed through wastefully. From Elliot Daly, that was terrible. Got to give yourself a bit more opportunity. That first set piece was brilliant. That one, atrocious. And they've got to make it at least sit up in the end goal. Can't just smack it dead like that. Daly will not be happy. It's kick long from Richards who replies and a nice little dip kick there as well. Philly Larue take a bow. That was good. Just shut that option down for the Flakers. And he said, no, get back in your half. Here is James Hudson to throw in. And oh, that's been knocked straight. That's pinned. 
pinged back from Hudson, and the referee gets one up here. And another chance for Wasps. What are they going to do? Option for them. Crouch. They go for the scrum, and Fine. why not? Because their last scrum was brilliant Sick. as well. It was devastating. Smashing the flakers off the ball. And another good hit there from the Wasps. They look in control in this pack. It's a very, very good pack as well. Robson. Options, he takes it himself for popping it away to Armitage, who goes away to Daly! Elliot Daly for three off nothing, and it's over! Well, the grubber was average, that dropping, not bad at all. It's 10 7, Wasps lead. Waiting in the back, Michael Guerin. Never gonna come for him. This is quite remarkable how this game has transpired. Both sides almost in a stalemate here. There goes half time just as we kick off. And up goes Ali Gino inside for Hudson. He tries to drop the shoulder, but he's brought down a good tackle. Pierre Valentine has to come and play scrum half. He's a dangerous little customer. Terrible Ali Gino picks it up well. It sits up on the left side, and Valera has just bobbled into touch as he tried to gather that loose ball, foot on the white line. Woo, that was exciting. 10-7 a score and Wasps are dominating their possession 53, Territory 55, line breaks are all tied up at three each. Handling errors though is what is letting the Corn Flakers down. Six by the home team, the visitors only making half that in three. The drop goal could be an difference maker and the Flakers are going to have to score tries if they're going to get into that lead and well, I mean win this game. Don't even think about bonus points, they've just got to win. And it's looking like the Guardians will be going into this next match with a lot more confidence that the Flakers do not pick up in the second half. 10-7 the score. Wasps lead over the Flakers. That last kickoff from Richards wasn't bad. Does he go to that well once more? Or does he go to the right-hand side? He does. High, very high, very good. Left to bounce. Oh, the bounce from the wall unpredictable, Allen. He's in touch. Tight end prop doing very, very well. Climbing exceptionally high. Losing his footing as he comes down, though. It's a line out to Wasps, but it's, it's inside their 22. So ultimately, overall, not a bad result here for the Flakers. Up it goes. Oh, that's close to being a turnover, but Gaskell pulls it in for the visiting side. Popped out to Carr. The Sam Carr creates space and opens it wide. It's three on one here. Early Gino's got to work because it was Armitage back inside. And almost Carl Eastman finding a lot of room. Robson. Oh, great ball. Great tackle equally, though, from Ali Gino there. As it was almost through from Armitage again. More. Robson is allowed to kick, and Michael Gurren will trick across and. He grabs this one in. Gurren running back. Oh, he's met with a heavy, heavy tackle Release. too. The Zam car is not one you want to run into when you're chasing back a kick. Andre Miller! Whoa! Absolutely decked there was Andre Miller. And now the flake is under trouble. Jack McCalmont goes high. Owen the Richards advantage. is chasing a knock on. And advantage to the Flakers as that one went brutally forward off the head, possibly. Or Billy LaRue, it went a long way. And claimed by ultimately a Crouch. player in an offside position as well. Fine. Should this be a full penalty here to the Flakers? Six. Not what they probably want though. The Flakers put it in. McCalmont does well in the scrum. It's twisting. Wasps! Oh, they've done it again! The pack from the Wasps have turned this ball over. Robson fires away to Goppet. Inside pass, finding room for Haskell. And through that, go through more. Options out wide. Alicino has got to work here against Guy Armitage. He pulls him down. Please. This is all wasps at the moment. Picking go and a thunderous hit. Release. On halfway, 55 gone and it's still wasps with the lead. They pass back inside from Launchbury and eventually it is Moore who pulls it in. Now they're inside their own half. Robson, left side Armitage, keeps it open as well as they keep the options wide. Daly gets it outside to Gloppert, who has knocked that on into Clementic play is O'Sullivan. Beats men for fun. Does Jack O'Sullivan. It's there now for Allen. 
Where the PF Valentine! He's straight through the guts! It's him on the top of the row! How's the rain gather? It's not bad, but he's short! Magical play from Pierre Valentine. Pick and go. Numbers to Brian Matthews. Away to Jimmy Ali Gino. That's a try for the Corn Flakers. Created by the captain, Pierre Valentine. Finished by one of the better players on the team in Jimmy Ali Gino. Hiding the Kellogg's. He's got the shark tucked in and he is all business. Ryan Webb just and beautifully, I might add, picked up from Peter Matthews. That was tippy toe stuff from the loose end prop. Not a man you would put those demands on. Look at this, oh, exquisite play from the big man. Matthews deserves all the credit there. And Jim Ali Gino dots down and celebrates a fantastic try. That puts the Flakers in the lead, which is great news for them. And they have struggled to really get that position with 20 to go, but this game, I fear, is far, far from over. Kicking towards the shopping mall. Here goes Owen Richards, and that is another beauty. Successful two points. It's 14-10. A try unconverted will get the lead back for Wasps. Jimmy Gopith has been, I think, very heavily involved in this game. This kickoff goes up. High one. Deep one as well. Short and McKelmont picks it in. Joseph does well. Hudson is picked up and driven. And turned over. Here come Wasp now. Big chance to win this game Release. for them. And a good tackle from Nicholson. Oh, that is a Release. thunderous hit there on Haskell. Have they got one more in the tank here? Wasp has come wide inside ball. Armitage has been there horribly well. Here's another chance for Haskell. Michael Guerin pulls him down. Release. Do we have it here? Five meters out. Bassett goes way to Armitage, the playmaker. Inside pass. Great work. And another try. Begging to be scored. Oh, it's short. Release. Guy Armitage is short. Here they go. Mullen. Release. Good tackle, Francois Valentine. Robson looking to direct traffic. Gompeth goes deep. Wide they come from car. Options are plenty. Inside and outside. Straight through the middle. Keeping it alive. Gotta be a try here. For the was. It's James Haskell. Haskell scores. Experience, experience. And the big man is over. It's hard. Exquisite play like that. The depth of the ball. Car away to Gaskell. And a good play from Eastman, popping it back inside Launchbury. Inside, outside, Gurren goes flying, but a try to Haskell is all that matters. Try and keep track of who has this ball. Exceptional play all round here. There was a pass inside from Young. That's the man I missed. But this game is going to go all the way, folks. We do not have long to go, and the Flakers are in jeopardy of being the first team to lose a match from the subscriber sides here. And they are one week out from the biggest clash of this season against the Guardians of the Crib. Can you believe it? 17-14, that drop goal from Elliot Daly is becoming increasingly important as this game wears into its final seven minutes. And drop goal will not win it here for the Flakers. They need a try. Conversion irrelevant. They need nothing but a try. But first things first, they need the ball. And they've got it through Joseph. Valentine. Oh, and McCalmon. They reset things now to the Flakers. Valentine. Terrible pass. Way to Ali Gino. He gets the wheels rolling. To Ali Gino. The whole three goes. Three tackles. Instantly hitting the mark here are the Flakers. Huge pass to O'Sullivan. And now they find Dev, Allen! Oh, high tackle! High tackle on Allen! And they have to reset. Willie LaRue, lucky not to be sent to the bin here. What is the option? Richards has the ball. They're going for a tap. It's Richards! He's got through one! He needs friends though. He desperately needs some friends. This could be oh, travesty. Travesty here. Knocked on! It's picked up from Valera. Away to Allen. This could be in. Wham! Ali Gino! Ali Gino scores! And the Flakers steal it right at the death. Wow. 
What a time to knock the ball on. Jim Ali Gino picks up a double. You would not read about it. Huge hit there. We had to find out who that was. But the calmness, the collectiveness of this Flakers side was simply, well, I don't think we can ever describe it. There it was. It was Francois Valentine. And they just kept calm. They stayed cool. And they just kept passing the ball. It's okay, everyone. You can breathe a sigh of relief. The Flakers have just managed to survive. How many tries they scored? Who cares? I think it's only three. There was no bonus point here, but the win was definitely in jeopardy. Here is Owen Richards, and a beautiful kick, irrelevant as it is, does not deny Wasp of a bonus point. They go down by four, but what a game we've been absolutely treated to here in this classic subscriber series, Global Rugby Challenge match. What an outstanding game. The Flakers, boy, did they get pushed. Pushed more than I've seen from anyone in a game like this. We've had some 7-5s, we've had some close ones. But to score with seven to go, take the lead, Wasps, and then they just could not defend. They had their ball. Robson, he picked and go. He looked for the easy option. All they had to do was kick it out. The buzzer went as he knocked that ball on. Had the Wasps picked it up, it would have been game over. It would have been scrum reset, which is game over. It didn't happen. It was picked up. And, of course, Manuel Valera, he started it all through the hands. Eventually, to Jim Ali Gino. Man, relive that. Relive that moment. Flakers fans, relive it over and over. Do not forget, though, Flakers up against the Guardians of the Crib next uh, week. So probably three episodes away, including Team of the Week. Which, of course, let me know who you think deserves to be in Team of the Week. Ironically enough, wingers is an area where we haven't been outstanding, but we had three tries all from wingers here today for the Flakers. Jamelli Gino with two. Andre Miller with, I think, try of the tournament so far as well by the Flakers. Owen Richards, superb. Three out of three from the tee. As for Wasp, there was a drop goal of Elliot Daly. They're just about one of four of them. Jimmy Gopp with two out of two for conversions. James Haskell and Elliot Daly with the try one apiece. Well, Wasps, they still did own this one, didn't they? They, they had possession and territory by a whisker. They did have control of the game many times throughout. Line breaks were even. They did concede penalties towards the end, but we all knew that a shot at goal was not enough to win this game. It was an immense encounter. It was one of the games of this series so far, and the Flakers come away with it. 21 points to 17 over Wasps. Well, if your heart is not beating at a million miles an hour, then you are not alive in the rugby world, I'm afraid to say. That was frantic. That was just ridiculous. The Flakers take the win by a whisker. A winning whisker. You can call it what you like. It was amazing. An absolute fantastic finish by the Flakers. Right, next up we've got to look forward to the All Flakes versus the Lions. The table is starting to get little splinters as my voice is starting to get destroyed as well. I, it just does not like finishes like that. It is just too exciting for one voice to handle. So I hope you enjoyed that encounter between the Flakers and Wasps as well. Let's look forward now. All Flakes versus the Lions. We'll have a look at the table first before we go on with that. We see the Guardians now, as I said, a little bit of division starting to creep into the table as we have the Guardians at the top on 24. Two bonus points further back and plenty of points differential as well to the Flakers, but they're still five out of five, so you can't really argue with that. Dragons and All Flakes still have the game to play. Um, best we can hope for there is two teams on 24 and two teams on 22. Um, other than that, we could have a team on each point, 21 through to 24. Uh, either way, next week or next episode, next, no, I should say next round, round six is what I was going for there, we will see one and two as it sits right now. Guardians up against Flakers for that first encounter. How were Wasps tracking? They were two and two. And to be fair, they should be three and two. They should have won that game. That was just the best performance I've seen from an AI side so far in the competition. 
We've got over here, we've got uh, two games to go here. All Flakes, Lions, Dragons, Clermont. For the big one, of course, Team of the Week will be in the middle there. So let me know who you think deserves to be in that squad for Team of the Week round number five. Until then, though, I'm going to go and reach my voice a little bit and my heartbeat because that was just thrilling. It was just amazing. The calmness, the collectiveness to finish that game off. 21-17. I take my head off to you, Flakers. And Jamelli Gino, the hero for the Flakers. We're getting a lot of last-minute heroes, of course. Uh, Sam Coop for the All Flakes. Now Jamelli Gino for the Flakers. Earning a bit of a reputation are those boys as well. But that is my time for today on the Global Rugby Challenge. Thank you all for tuning in and joining me for these matchups. If you enjoyed it, do not forget to hit that thumbs up and, of course, subscribe so you don't miss the rest of the season as it comes your way. But until then, thank you all for tuning in, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.